Hello there. Uh, today I'm going to show you how to use Jira. So let's start off with uh, what is Jira. Jira is an agile defect management tool. And very quickly, I'm going to show you how to use Jira. Um, mind my spelling, management. <laughs> there we go. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to create a project in Jira. The project we're going to create is a Scrum project. I'm going to show you how to set up your backlog. And this is your product backlog. I'm going to show you how to create a sprint in Jira. I'm going to show you how to um, create subtask in Jira and lastly I'm going to show you how to create a bug in Jira. So let's get started. Um, a lot of you by now would have received an email from Jira asking you to set up your username and password. So one of our database for Jira is BZQA1 so I'm just going to go in here and I'll start off by creating a new project. So to create a new project, I'll call it project, click on project, and um, I'll click on create project. It's gonna ask me what type of project do you wanna create? So when we're doing a scrum lifecycle, so I'll click on scrum and I'll press the next button. Now this is the um, this is my sprint dashboard. So it's asking me if I'm okay with just having this workflow. Just press select, that's fine. And it's asking me for a name. So I'm gonna call it Thai Demo 2. And I'll press submit. So now I have a project that is empty, and this here is my product backlog. So typically, a product owner will go into the backlog and create requirements. Requirements are called stories in a Scrum lifecycle. So for example, let's say we're trying to build a car and the product owner has a few requirements. The first one could be build the car's engine. The second story could be build the car interior. Now if you notice whenever I create a story to save the story I press enter. So you press your enter key and that saves the story. The third story could be build the exterior and I'll press enter and that saves it. So this is how you create a project and this is how you create your backlog. Now the next thing that happens in a scrum life cycle, so let's go back into our class notes. So we've done this already. So I've showed you how to create a scrum project. And I've also showed you how to set up your product backlog. The next thing that will happen is we have to give a story point to each story. What does that mean? A story point is the amount of time it's going to take us as a team to work on a story. And as I told you guys in class, a story point is a measure of time. So every team has one story point as a reference point, and that can mean something. That, you know, one story point can mean four hours in a team. Whereas another team, one story point can mean one day. The CSM on your team will help you define what a one story point is. So now the team will vote. We'll have a planning poker card and we'll vote and we're going to assign each story a story point. So to do that you will click on the story and where it says estimate you would assign the story point to it. So my first story is a five story point. My second story I'll give it a ten story point. And my third story, I'll give it a 15 story point. You know, what does this mean? 
This means my second story will take us twice the time it takes for the first story. My third story will take us three times the amount of effort it took for the first one. So this is how your backlog will look like at the end of the planning meeting. The next step is now to create a sprint. So we'll create a sprint and um, we can call it TD Sprint 1. And um, the next thing now is we will move work from the backlog into the sprint. And we do that by dragging and dropping. So I'll just drag and drop my story into the sprint. Now, the Scrum Master would know how many story points a team can do in every sprint. So I'm going to assume that this team can do 15 story points in every sprint. That's why we have two stories in this sprint. Okay, so once I have my sprint, I have my stories in my sprint, we can start the sprint. So we'll click on Start Sprint. The Jira is going to ask you for the name of the sprint. We can leave that there the way it is. For the duration of the sprint, we can make it two weeks. And um, it's going to start today and it will finish in November 12, which is 10 days from now. And we'll press Start. And you can see now, this is my sprint dashboard. And you can see we have two stories and um, we're about to work on them. So that's how you create a sprint. Now, sometimes you might have one story that is worked on by many people on the team. How do you manage the work by many people on a team? It's quite simple. We we'll break down the story into sub-task. And to do that, right-click on the, on the link of the story, TD1, right-click on it, press Open Link in a new tab. Once you get into the new tab, you click on the three dots on the far right hand side and you press create subtask. So I'm trying to break the story down into three smaller tasks. So the first one could be a design work that has to be done on the story and I'll assign that, there will be a description of the work that has to be done and I would assign that to a team member on my team. So I can use, for example, let's say a deep, and that goes to a deep, and I'll press create. Now, if I have to create another subtask, you know, instead of doing it, you know, create, I can just press this guy here, create another one. And when I press create, you know, the first subtask is created, and Jira right away opens up another one for me to create the second subtask. You can call it a shortcut. So my next one could be develop the work and give it a subtitle or description and I'll assign it to somebody else on my team. Maybe let's say um, to Nithya. Okay? And lastly, I'll create a third story, or a subtask, sorry, and maybe this is test. So test the, uh, test the story. And in my, I'll put my description in here and I will assign that to maybe path. Okay, now that I'm done, this is my last subtask. I will uncheck this box and I'll press the create. In my story, I can see that I have one story that is a five point story. That's the estimate. And the story has three subtasks assigned to different people. You can always go back to your backlog or your sprint dashboard from by using this short court. See? This will take me to the backlog so I can see the backlog. And I can see in the backlog that there's only one story left. You know, we're working on the two right now. Also, I can go into the sprint. In the sprint, I have my story and I have my three subtasks assigned to different people. So once this guy, I believe is Adip, is it, I started a design work, a deep will move the, the subtask into in progress. So everyone knows that deep is started working. Same thing here, once the, the, the programmer starts to develop the engine, 
it will move this task into develop. And lastly, once the QA starts to test the engine, the QA would also move the soft task to in progress. And lastly, you know, deep once it's done the design work, it will close the soft task. Same thing happens for the programmer. Once they've done building the engine, they would close the subtask and lastly testing. Now, what happens while you're testing? I'm testing the engine, as you can see it's in progress, and I find a bug. How would I log that bug? So that's the last topic I'm going to show you in Jira. So I've showed you how to create a subtask in Jira. Now lastly, I'm going to show you how to create a bug. So Ty was testing the story and I found a bug. To create a bug, I'll click on the create button at the top here. So create a button. Now click on create. And it's going to ask me, what do you want to create? So I'm going to say, I want to create a bug. And I told you guys in class, every bug needs to have a meaningful title. So I can say the engine the engine is not gas, gasoline. Right, I'm just making something up. It doesn't matter. And I'll give it a description. So your description could be the engine is not gasoline. I observe the engine uses diesel. Steps to reproduce the problem. Um, open the car hood. Hmm. I'm just making things up here. It doesn't matter. I'm not a car buff, so I don't really know much about engines. But let's say you open up the car hood. Um, you open the engine vault and you um, you drain the fluid and you observe that fluid is diesel and not gasoline okay and lastly, you say C attachment. All right? Because as I told you guys in class, nobody will believe you if you can show me some kind of proof, either as an attachment, as in a screenshot, or a video. So to now do the attachment, I've given you guys um, Snagit. So I'm going to, well, I'm, actually, I'm recording right now, so my Snagit would not allow me to take a. Um, a screenshot because I'm recording this video right now but I have a few saved already so I'm gonna go into my attachment and press browse and I'll pick one of my old screenshots so you can see right away my screenshot is there and if the team agrees that every bug uh, should go into the backlog then I don't need to attach this bug to a sprint but if the team agrees that hey we need to fix every bug in the sprint before we can close the sprint. Then I have to find my sprint, and Jira helps you out. So he knows the sprint I'm looking for is TD Sprint 1. All right. If I have another bug to create, I'll click on this checkbox, and I'll press Create. But if it's only one I'm creating, I'll press Create. But guys, I'm not done yet. This bug has to be assigned to somebody. There has to be a developer that will work on the bug. So I'm going to assign to Power Deep, and this bug needs a severity. Jira does not use severity. Jira uses priority, but it's the same thing. So right now I'm saying this bug is a medium. So Jira actually has five different levels. So I can give it a medium. That's fine. And I'll press Create. So you can see right away, guys, the bug is now been added to my sprint and you can see the bug is assigned to a deep if I open up the bug you can see my screenshot and you can see everything else I have added to the bug 
So this is a perfect looking bug. All right. So at the end of the sprint, um, let's close the sprint. So at the end of the sprint, the Scrum Master will close the sprint, and um, that will be the end of it. In a perfect sprint, everything should be done before you close it. So in a perfect sprint, all your work should be done. Um, so I have my three subtasks done. My story is done. Um, the other two issues are working on as well. This should be done, and the bug should have been fixed. So this here is a perfect looking sprint. So once this looks good, we can now complete the sprint by saying complete. You press complete and the sprint is done. This is your rundown chart. I explained this in class already. Um, you don't have to worry about this. It's mostly for the Scrum Master. But let's check our backlog. Let's see what it looks like. Now my backlog is a lot simpler. So the first two stories because we finished working on them, they're gone. And now the backlog only has one sprint. So everyone knows Agile is an iterative life cycle. So we'll do the same thing again. We'll create a new sprint. We'll plan the story. We'll move the story into the current sprint. We'll work on the story. We'll close the sprint. And we'll do the same thing over and over again until all the issues in the backlog has been completed. And that's it. That's how you use Jira. Now, some of you might ask me, how can I find my old stories? Because now the backlog is gone. Wait, where is it? Where can I find it? There's something called issues. This is where you can actually search for issues. So you click on issues and you say you want to search for an issue and you find your project. So I believe my project's name was Thai Demo. So I can click on Thai Demo. And Jira will now show you all the issues opened in that project. And these are the two stories that have been closed. Because it's been closed, the status is done. Okay? So that's how you find issues that Jira, you know, is closed or is hidden. You can easily go into your issues and you find all those issues. So that's how you use Jira. I'm going to stop the video, and if you have any questions, you can email us or ask your lab attendant. Thank you.